The character. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Had to clear my throat there. Oh, oh no. The character creator plugin, a plugin that allows players to create their own character within the RPG Maker MV game itself. Is there anything else you need to say? Let's get straight into it. The first thing you're obviously going to need to do is install the actual character creator plugin, just like this. Next, linked in the description of this video is going to be a link to where you can download the character creator pieces that you're going to need to actually set this up in your game. Simply download the zip file, go inside of it, copy the folder, then go into your game folder like this, Go into your image folder, create a some random dude folder if you haven't already, so some random dude. Then inside there, paste the character creator folder just like this. And there we go! Okay, so now we have a character creator folder within here, so it should look something like this. Image folder, some random dude folder, character creator, and then you see all these image files like this, and then all these folders like this. And when you see that, you're set up and ready to go. So in order to actually call upon the character creator, simply use a plugin command. So we'll do the plugin command right here, and it's going to be open character, whoa, character creator, and then a number. And this number represents the actor ID that's going to be character created. For example, in this project, Harold is actor ID 1, which means we input a 1 right here, that means we'll customize Harold. So we'll hit OK, and we'll hit OK, and we should be good to go. So now when we go into the game and interact with the event, as you can see right here, we're going to fade out and then fade into character creator. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different sections you go into, each one has their own images, and they'll see yellow sections. The yellow ones represent the mandatory sections that must be filled out before exiting, as you can see right here. So let's create a quick character. So we'll create a body, we'll create some eyes, we'll create some eyebrows, we'll uh, create a nose, okay, and we'll create a mouth. And then we'll also add some clothing, so like, uh, maybe that's right here. Front hair, yeah, sure, whatever. Then some rear hair, yeah, there we go, okay, cool. And then we'll exit out, are you sure you want to save this character? We'll hit yes. And when we do so, as you can see right here, Harold does now completely change into this new custom character, both in the character sprite and the face image. And if we went to a battle, you'd also see the side view battler if you're using side view battles. A final thing to keep in mind is that once you've created a custom character, if you go back into the character creator, you'll load up their custom character again, if you load up the same actor ID that was customized before. So yeah, it's all that simple and really easy to do. You can customize as many characters as you have actors in your game, and you can just, just set them up and do it and create the characters and let the players use them. Yeah, that's simple. So of course, now let's actually go into the parameters and look at all the available options for setting this thing up. So first of all, let's look at the basic yet most powerful option in this plugin, which is the wait for loading. As you saw, you can change the color of certain pieces as I showed before. We'll get into this more later. But say for example, you want this hair right here, you click on it, then you can change the color just like this. So we can change the yellow, green, darker green, and just keeps shifting the hue of the color of the piece of the thing. Yeah, but there is one small problem, which is if we go really fast and try to like, skip through order right fast, as you may notice, there's a tiny bit of lag that occurs because it has to take time to load up the colored piece. Now there's an alternative to have it lag, which is to actually load them all at once. So if we go in here and set wait for loading to be true, just like this, now as you can see, when we select a piece, it'll load all the resources before actually let us change the color. Once it is done loading, as you can see right here, the color change will be super fast and work perfectly, just like this. Of course, as you saw, loading took a quite a bit of time. For things such as like eyebrows, which are really small, they don't take that much time. But for bigger things like front hair or rear hair, this takes a good amount of time for things to load up and get ready to go. So it really depends on which one you want to use, whether you want to wait for loading or just have some lag, or perhaps you could even change the amount of colors available to make sure you don't have to load up as much. It's up to you. We'll get into the more of that later. But anyway, back into the character creator parameters. As you see right here, we have layers, order, and mandatory. We'll worry about these later, but essentially layers lets you set the layers of each piece in the folders. Order lets you set the actual order of all the commands on like the little section area right there. And then finally, mandatory lets you set up all the mandatory sections that have to be mandatory. As you can see, you just separate each one with the comma and list them all out. Finally, you can also customize a mandatory color, which for this example is going to be just yellow, just like that. But anyway, let's go down to the color picker. As you can see right here, you can change the amount of colors available in the game. As you may have noticed, colors are simply hue shifts of a single image added to the actual character. So if you had 13, that'll be 13 different hue shifts that are spread out across 0 to 255. 
which of course gives you a good choice of colors. But if you want to reduce lag and just make it so things are a lot faster, you can set something like five. So now there's only going to be five colors, which can make things loading a lot faster and make it so while you do have less options, they're going to be still drastically different options. So there's going to be bigger hue shifts. You can also change the text that appears on the color chooser. So by default, it's just going to be color colon and the actual color number. But you could set it just to actually the number itself, so just percent one, just like that, and yeah, you're good to go. You can also change the sound effects of the color changing and the color saving, just like this. So you didn't really hear it in this recording. When I hit the arrow keys on the color picker, it did a sound effect for the cursor one, and when I clicked OK, it did a sound effect for the save sound effect thing, right? Here. Next are the visual options. Once again, if you wish to reduce lag, you can turn the active color load to false. This will make it so only once you select the color will it appear in the preview window. So it will make it so that it doesn't have to load each and every color every time you swipe through each individual, you know, color for the piece. But once again, that will reduce how cool it looks and, you know, you want to make it look as cool as possible. Also you have the fade transition. You can use a fade transition if you want or just make it instantaneous. And you can also do a use background to make so whether or not I want to use a background image stored within the character creator. Finally, you can also set so how many columns there are for small pieces and big pieces. So say you have a wider screen resolution and you want to make it so there's more than three columns for like the small pieces and more than one column for like the big face pieces, you'd simply set this to like two, just like that. And now as you can see here are big pieces now have two columns just like this and it pushed over this preview window quite a bit but it still works sort of works with a small window and of course the small pieces still have their three columns but yeah but if you did increase the screen resolution you want to increase these so you have more room just to be able to like see all these guys and yeah after the visual options comes the actual dialogues as you see right here these are just the dialogues that play when you attempt to leave the character creator. So when you try to leave, it's going to say, are you sure you want to save this character? And then you can hit yes or no, and that'll be good. Alternatively, if you don't have all of your mandatory ones filled out first, it'll ask you, you need to have all of your mandatory filled out before exiting. And as you can also see, you can use backslash N to create a new break line. So if you have more lines for your thing, it's a little hard to set up. Once you do, it looks good. Yeah. You can also set up all the sizes for all of your characters. This is more for advanced stuff when you want to add in your own pieces, but essentially you can set up the character width and height, the SV character width and height, and the face width and height, as you see right here. Then finally comes most, well, one of the most powerful functions, which is setting all the default like things for each individual section. So by default, a section is going to use the character image. It's going to be looking in the down direction. It's going to have colors available to be switched upon and it's always going to be active because the condition is going to be set to true. But say for example, you want to switch something. Say for example, you want to use like the body, the face images for the body selection. Well, all you do is step one, find a new blank section. So we'll go all the way down to section 10. We'll set the name of our section to be body, just like this. We'll set it so its source is going to be face instead of character like this. And this will make it so in the command window, it'll show face images instead of the character images like you saw before, or as you see for like the clothes and stuff. So let's actually go back and let's do something like, I don't know, let's find, um, well, let's first go back to like something like clothing. So it's already been said ready to go. So clothing is going to use the character images like just like this. But what if we want to make it so that the section clothing uses our face images just like this, you didn't put face just like that. And so now as you can see, our clothing is now using a face images just like this. So you can input something like this, maybe like this, maybe, I don't know, something like this. There we go. And it just lets you set up things to be better and fit more with what you want to do. However, if you do wish to switch, however, if you are using, however, if you are using the character image just like this, you can customize the direction the character is looking using this direction thing right here. So we can set it to looking right, just like that. And now as you can see in the clothing section, all of the clothing pieces are looking to the right as opposed to looking down as they were before. Say for example, we want to customize the color of the clothing. You'd set this to true, just like that, as it is by default, as you know. Now, as you can see here, when we select a piece of clothing, you can now customize a color just like this. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like that. As you can see, the color clothing is changing. Yeah. And then finally comes the condition. This is a JavaScript condition that must be true for this section to appear. Say for example, we do something like uh, game switches dot value of switch ID one has to be set to on. So equals equals true for this section to appear. So we'll do that. Then we'll go back to our map right here. We'll make a new event. We'll make it so this person turns switch one on. So uh, this guy, he's going to make it so tab one control switches switch one is going to be turned on when we interact with this person right here so now when we go into the game as you see right here we'll go into the character creator but as you may notice our character clothing is missing so let's set up a quick character like nose eyebrows yeah cool eyes doop -a doop body there we go it's just gonna be a naked person 
Sure, you want to save this character? Yep. So that's going to happen. Let's go talk to this guy. He's going to turn controls. He's going to, you know, set switch one on. Then we're going to go back to this person. And now switch one is turned on. Clothing will be available within the list. So you can set it. So I'm going to use this dress now. Yeah. And then we can exit once again. And yeah. Hooray. Cool. 10 out of 10. Awesome. Amazing. But pretty much the purpose of this is let's just control what sections are going to be active at what times. So say at the beginning of the game, you'll make it so all sections are available for creating your character from scratch. But then later in the game, the character might want to change their clothes. So you said it so the clothing is the only thing that appears in the sections. Or alternatively, you may want to change the accessories. You switch it so accessories are the only things that appear. And so doing that, you can control what players can customize at different parts in your game. And that was about it for the parameters. Now let's make it so we can use our custom character's face in a dialogue. It's very, very, very simple. Let's create a show text we'll do. This is a custom face. Now to make it so the character custom character's face is shown, you need to do two things. Number one, make sure a face image is used in this dialogue. It doesn't matter what face image it is, just make sure there's one in there. Next, use a note tag CC face for custom character face, colon, then the ID of the actor whose custom character you're going to use for as this dialogue's face. So we'll do custom character face one, since that's a character, that's the actor we're going to be customizing. And so now when we do so, that custom character's face is going to appear in the face slot. So let's do something like that. We'll do another one. And then we'll do another one, but in the middle one, we're just gonna not have it like this. So boom, just for testing purposes. And then, yeah, so let's try it out. So I've created a quick custom character right here. So let's exit out of here and save this character. And now as you can see right here, Harold or actor ID one is now the custom character. Now let's go talk to this person. And as you can see right here, their face appears in the dialogue because we were using the CC face ID is set to one, which is Harold. So now it's gonna be showing this face and all those dialogues that have that note tag inside of them. And then finally, the last thing to know about is a plugin command that allows you to disable and enable custom character images. So you can use the plugin command disable character creator images one, and this will make it so Harold or actor ID one has their custom character disabled, just like this. So we'll do, do you want to disable custom character for actor ID one? If yes, then we're gonna run the plugin command disable custom character creator images one. On the other hand, if we hit no, that means we'll enable them. So we'll do enable Wait, yeah, wait up, enable creator character, <laughs> blah, 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 enable character creator images one. So let's make it so Harold's custom character will be enabled again. So now as you can see right here, Harold is now another custom character just like this. If we go talk to this guy right here, he's going to ask if we want disabled, so we'll hit yes. And when we do so, Harold will go back to normal as a normal Harold character. But if we do it again, we hit no, now he'll go back to his custom character because we enabled it once again. It's that simple, and you can use it for something, I don't know, I just wanted to make it an option that you can do. Now, we're done with all the basic stuff. But let's get into more of the advanced stuff on how to actually add your own images to the character creator and stuff like that. So let's go into your game folder, open folder, go into the image folder, some random dude, character creator, and go back to this thing right here. So there's a lot of things to take in, but let's address them. First of all, background.png. This is a background image that's gonna be used if you are using background images for your character creator. Next is a custom character and the character custom face. These are images that are gonna be used when like a character can't be loaded for whatever reason. There are some rare occasions where I found this to be the case, but you don't really have to worry about them. But if they do occur, it'll use a custom character for a, like a, you know, like a holder for your like lack of a custom character or a custom face for your like lack of a custom face. And then finally comes the loading resources image, which is going to be like the text that appears when you're loading resources. Now here comes the part where we talk about the important stuff, which is the character creator pieces. As you can see, there's four folders, dead, face, side view, and walk, which are obviously going to refer to the different four things that you create when you create a custom character. So let's first go and look in the walk section. As you can see right here, there's folders for every single section in the character creator, except some of them are split into part one and part two. We'll get into that later. But you get the points like beast ears, body, clothing, eyebrows, glasses, mouth, nose, and essentially just things for every single one. Then within here, uh, we'll go and look at maybe clothing, for example. As you can see, it's just going to be the clothing images that are applied to the character when this thing is selected. And essentially, here's how it works. First of all, make sure each folder has the same folders within it. So they all have the accessory A, they all have body, they all have clothing, so dead, face, um, SV, and also walk. They all need that in the same folders representing the same types of sections within them. And the way it works is that when you click on one of these sections, so for example, you click on eyes, then you go into here. This means when you click on eyes one, this file is going to be applied to SV. On the other hand, for the face, if you go into eyes and we click on this one right here, this can be applied to the face image. Yeah. So if you want to add more eyes, first thing you had goes go in here, add a new image and add it to the end and give it a different name like eyes and then parentheses 19. But you also gotta make sure that file exists in all the other folders. So for example, SV, 
eyes, and it goes right here. You gotta make sure it appears in walk, eyes, and here. And essentially, you gotta make sure all these folders match up together. Of course, in some instances, you want some pieces to not appear on certain things. Say, for example, you have like, I don't know, you have the walk sprites and you have like the wings. You want wings to appear on the actual character, but you don't want them to appear on like the actual face image. So what you do is just create blank images that go right there. So as you can hear, these are all just blank images I've placed inside the wing folder thingy. Now the other thing to address is the fact that there's like part one and part two for all these. And you may be asking yourself, like, why are these split into like multiple parts? And the reason is that for some instances, we want different things that have different layers. Say, for example, we go back to the walk sprite again. We'll go to our wing sprite right here. As you may notice, wing part one has all the sprites for when the character is looking upward. But on the other hand, wing part two has all the sprites for when looking down, left, or right. And the reason for this is because when the character is looking down, left, or right, you want these wings to be on a different layer than the ones that are the ones for like the character looking up. Because, you know, when they're looking up, you want the wings to be on top of everything because they're looking they're back towards you. On the other hand, when they're looking to the left, right, or down, you want the wings to be behind the character so you have all these images right here. Going back into the parameters right here, as you may notice, all these contain different parts included. So wing part 2 is going to be on a very low layer since you want these to be on the bottom of the characters. But on the other hand, wing part 1 is going to be on the highest layer because you want this to be on the highest layer behind the player when they're looking upward. Just like that. I know it's very confusing to understand, but hopefully you understand. Of course, if you do wish to create your own multi-layered part, simply follow this format. Do the actual name of the part just like this, and then next we do a space, and then part one, part two, or you create part three, part four, you can try make as many parts as you like, as long as you follow this format. And then in game, it'll just be one big section called rear hair, or maybe like cape or something you're doing. And when you click on it, all different parts will be applied onto a single character, just like that. So once again, like, it's gonna be the rear hairs, which you wanna have on top of the player when they're looking up. But then you have all these ones right here you want to have behind the character or on a different layer when they're looking down, left, or right. But yeah, I think that's everything about the character creator you can learn about. So yeah, there we go. Character creator out, done, tutorial done, <laughs> thank goodness. And you can find the plugin linked in the description where you can go and do, click on it and download it. Yeah. See, also see when you're down there, you should also find this thing called like the like button. You should click on that like button as hard as you can if you if you enjoyed this. And you should also leave a comment if you want. Uh, you're probably some people may have some problems with this. I'm sure. I mean, you may be confused. I know I didn't do this tutorial very good, but maybe it worked out okay. And if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments, and I'll answer them. Even if you don't have a question, you still just go into the comments and be like, "Hey, how you doing?" Uh. My name's, enter your name here, and uh, thanks for this character creator plugin thing. Yeah, cool. Oh, you want to know something that is cool though? YouTube actually introduces like new system thing where you actually like, show thumbnails as clickable buttons just like this instead of having to like, edit them into the video. So now it's like, now I can just do that instead of having to like go through all the hassle. It's pretty nice. Also, you see that right there? That's that's that's, that's like a that's a thumbnail to a video. You can go there. Or alternatively, you can go to like that, you know, the uh, subscribe button. You should subscribe if you haven't already. Like seriously, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this video, you should subscribe. It's going to be awesome. Also, like you can check out my Patreon so you can throw money at me, which I would really appreciate. That'd be nice. I, I can use it to do stuff. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, um, character creating. Cool. Awesome. 10 out of 10. Best ever.